Rub up your engines! Think of that new 2020 Corvette Stingray with the mid-engine. Realize that there is a Belgian engineer of Russian descent called Zora, and he started the idea of it, and now they have a mid-engine Corvette. Now they say it's going to list at under $60,000, and it has a mid-engine V8 engine that puts out 495 horsepower, so it's got a reasonable amount of power. Of course, it's nothing compared to the Hellcat engine that's pushing 800 horsepower. It's competing more with the mid-engine European sports cars. Now, the first that came out in the 1950s, they had a straight six cylinder engine, and it only put out a little over 100 horsepower. It didn't have that much horsepower. Matter of fact, people even said it was underpowered, and quickly they put a V8 engine into it. This new one really has nothing to do with the old Stingray. Uh, they, we're talking a mid-engine car. It's a very interesting design. What you got to realize is this is a first year model they made them. They just came out with them. Never, ever buy a first year model car. You have no idea what kind of flaws are in it. And knowing GM, there's going to be some flaws in it. For the purists, they're not even letting you have a standard transmission. There's going to be no standard transmission, only an automatic transmission. They got all those paddle shifter things on them. But they're only going to be automatic transmissions. And there's a lot of hype coming out with it too. GM just said that. Oh, they've already sold them all out, but they won't give a how many they've sold. They're also not giving out what their production is going to be in 2020, how many they're going to make. They're not giving any of this information out. So to me, there's a lot of P.T. Barnum hype being thrown out on this thing. Uh, they're not giving straight figures yet. So, you know, nobody knows. I'm sure they'd be fun to drive around for a vehicle that'll be zippy like that, under 60 grand. You know, you're not going to find too many mid-engine cars in that price range. But Scotty, me, I wouldn't touch one of those things until... They've been around a while, and you see how they hold up and what flaws they have. And, of course, you can always get them cheaper used when they get older, too. I mean, I got a customer that bought one of those fancy Teslas, the Model S. Some sucker paid one hundred and twenty-five grand for the car. He bought it used, and it only had 15,000 miles on it. He bought it for $45,000. So that was like one-third, practically, of what the original owner paid for the car. So if you're smart like me, wait a while on stuff. Don't jump on the bandwagon and get caught up with all this hoopla. I'm sure they're going to be charging premiums at dealers to sell them to people. It's an image thing too, though, but I, I'd wait myself. I would just wait. Universal Associates, Scotty, is the true you can protect your car from being hacked by wrapping your key fob in aluminum foil. An article in USA Today said so. Well, it's a lot more complicated than that. Here is the kicker. If you have, say, one of these fobs that you push the button and it unlocks your car's door. You can't cover it with aluminum foil or it won't unlock your door. It's got to be able to broadcast. And if someone is sneaky enough to be following you around and having a receiver and they can receive that signal that bounced into your car, then they're going to be able to steal your car. They'll be able to get into your car, and then they can, if they have a blank key, they can program the key to make your car start. So I don't think that's going to stop anything. If you're talking about one that you physically open with a key, later you put it in the car and turn it, Yes, you could do that. It has to unlock the door, which they're not going to be able to do. But if you got one that unlocks it, you can't put foil around it, it won't work. So, you know, a lot of these articles people give are a bunch of crap. They don't know what they're talking about. They don't even understand half the systems that they're talking about. But people can steal cars with the keyless ignition systems a lot easier if they're pros. You know, most people aren't going to steal a regular car. They're going to be going after, you know, fancy Lexus, Mercedes, whatever. They're not going to be stealing your Toyota. Odds are they're going to follow you around to steal your Toyota. Raymond says, I'd like to buy a used truck for five to seven grand. Any truck is as good as long as the bed is reliable. What do you recommend? Well, if you can find a Toyota Tacoma in that price range, get a Toyota Tacoma. Those things can run forever. They're very hard to find good used, though, because most people have them. They drive them forever because that's what they want. They got it, and they don't break, so they keep driving it around. If you can't find that, look for either a 
F-150 or a Ford Ranger that doesn't have too many miles on it. There's lots of them out there too. You know? If you're going to get an F-150, really, you got to get a V8 engine. They're a much better truck. So if you do that, get a V8. With the Ranger, ah, you can even get the four-cylinder engine and those. They're okay. Vlad Vlad says, is Fiat the best? No. <laughs> they're horrible cars. <laughs> the only good Fiat is one that somebody else owns that you don't have to pay for fixing it when it breaks down. When I was young, they sold Fiats to the United States and everybody called them fixed it again Tony because they're always breaking then they brought them back a few years ago when Fiat bought Chrysler and now Fiat's even talking about leaving the American market they'll still be selling the Chryslers and the uh, Chryslers that have Fiat engines and transmissions that have Chrysler names but the actual brand of Fiat is selling so poorly in the United States they're talking about just pulling out again they make such garbage don't buy one if you value your money so if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos Remember to ring that bell!